we're going to get it started with some lo-fi hip-hop beats to relax and study to. Ready? Go. <laughs> Welcome to High Tide with Kai. I'm your host, Mitch. In this episode, I interview one of our designers, Chelsea. We go over Chelsea's art background, their education, and how it led to working at Inked Gaming. And then we jump into Pokemon Sword and Shield and in the cast with some Magic the Gathering talk. And also, Chelsea, I'm going to hold you to it. We're going to play some two-headed giant once uh, Kraken Cards gets opened. It was a pleasure to have Chelsea on. Big thanks to them for coming on the cast, and thank you for tuning in. This is High Tide with Kai, an Inked Gaming and Kraken Cards podcast. All right. Thanks for joining us, Chelsea. So Chelsea, like we said in the intro, is an Inked Gaming designer. Uh, how long have you been working at Inked Gaming, Chelsea? Since May of this year. Since May of this year. So <laughs> newcomer. Uh, how do you like it so far? Oh gosh, I love it. I honestly just feel like I'm part of the family and I did when I started too, which I definitely didn't expect because previous experience, I've had jobs where it's just like, oh, you're hired here, do the things we want you to do, but not actually feel like I truly belong. Yeah. Whereas you're inked, I definitely feel like I belong. Well, that's good. That's great. I know um, we've We've done a few things to try to, you know, facilitate that and try to welcome people in. And the f kind of family vibe, family feel is one of the reasons why I have stayed at Inked for basically all of my post-college work career. Uh, and I'm hoping to stay here for a lot longer. What, what, are you, what are your plans for like, do you have a 10 year plan? Do you have a five year plan? Are you just, do you just spur, you know, like just day by day type person? Oh man, well that's a really good question. Um, I mean, for the most part, I would say that a lot of people say I'm a little bit too future focused. Um, but as far as like plans go, I don't really have plans, I guess. Um, okay. At least that I can think of off the top of my head. I'd say I'm probably just more of a like spur of the moment kind of person. Nice, nice. So, yeah. so to get into it, who are you? If you know, like that's a very, very general question. But what's the first thing that comes to your mind when when you're asked who who are you? Oh man, um, I'm just a really strange person. <laughs> <laughs> and that um, and that's great. <laughs> oh yeah, I think so too. There's nothing wrong with being a little bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, being weird is kind of my brand too. So I, I, I feel you on that. <laughs> I feel uh, like that's everyone here, if I'm being honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's good to be different. It's good to be weird. It's good it's 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 a lot more uh it's a lot more fun than being, you know, a, a normie. <laughs> what is normal? <laughs> uh yeah, yeah. Uh so you know, with with Inked Gaming we started out on tabletop games, but we kind of moved into PC gaming and we've been kind of dabbling into other other types of um you know like twitch tv and all sorts of youtube stuff now this podcast um i wanted to start it off with a couple of questions that just kind of pertain to tabletop gaming and video gaming so what is okay. your all-time favorite video game oh boy there's so many out there <laughs> um <laughs> i mean for me it's it's all about like the game that's going to really like grab my attention almost immediately. And even though I generally don't have favorites, I would probably say that Pokemon is my favorite of all time. Nice. <laughs> Which version? Oh gosh. You know, the new games are super cool and I really like those, but I started in Gen 3, so I'm going to have to say the Hoenn region, definitely. Okay, okay. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Wait, so what was the starters in that one? I don't remember. Um, Mudkip, Trico, and Vorchick. Oh, Mudkip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yep. that's fun. I, I started in red-blue, but um, I think my favorite is uh, silver, actually. Oh, okay. The, the gold-silver, the next gen. I think it wasn't that gen 2. 
yes. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of good memories from from that those eras. I think I think yeah, I agree with you. The new ones are like super fine tuned and amazing to play, but Gen two and three like fixed a lot of stuff from Gen one, like mm -hmm. a lot of issues that Gen one had, like the bike and you know running yep. and stuff like that. Well, it added a lot of new mechanics too. Like we got an introduction to berries in the second generation mm -hmm. and a bunch of other things like um, like day and night. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. That was, that was really cool. I'm really glad that they included those things. Generation 2 definitely was, like, the turning point for Pokemon. Yeah, I forgot about Day and Night. Because, like, there were times where I would, I would uh, like, do all my chores early so that I could I could play in the night so to catch certain Pokemon. <laughs> and then vice versa. I'd, I'd, like, put off all my chores. Uh, or, yeah, yeah. And just play Pokemon in that. the afternoon. Yep. <laughs> So, uh, moving on, what is your favorite tabletop game of all time? Oh, wow. Jeez. Well, I've been playing a lot of um, Lord of the Rings living card game with my friend on the weekend. So, I would say probably that. Oh, I interesting. I don't really know if I have, like, any others, though, but that one is fantastic. Nice. Living card games are, are really interesting. I have not played enough of them, but... Um, they, so what's another, what's another example of the living card game? Was World, World of Warcraft, was that a living card game? Um, I don't know. I never played it. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, and I, I also know that you're a, uh, Magic the Gathering player too, and we'll probably get into that later in the, in the show. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, moving on to your, what you do for Inked Gaming, and that is design. So I wanted to touch on, so we're, we're kind of profiling each, uh, each staff member that wants to come on to this podcast and mm -hmm. just kind of get to know you uh, for future episodes. And this could also be a, these podcasts are going to be posted on our, hopefully posted on our profiles on the website. So when you go over to uh, check out all the staff members, there'll be little introductory podcasts for each, each staff member. So, um, from a designer standpoint, when did you know that you were going to do this as an occupation? Was it something you wanted to do since you were like five, or did you kind of just grow into it? Oh, man. If I knew about it at five, I think my whole life moving forward would have been so much different. <laughs> That's just real. That's like pretty young to be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to be a graphic designer. <laughs> yeah. Five years old. Yeah, most people are like, I'm going to be an astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, I suppose... As far as like my journey into graphic design, it really didn't start till I hit community college oh. because that was where I took a class. It was like one of my very first real like graphic design classes outside of high school. Um, I'd taken a few in high school as well, but at that point I was just like, well, I just want to like use Photoshop and draw a bunch of really cool crap. Like I don't care about the graphic design elements of this. Um, <laughs> so, but community college is definitely where that started for me. Um, I did not do very good in the class that I was in though, which is interesting because I feel like I'm such a different person from them, but I just was like, I had this attitude where I was like, okay, I'm here, but I don't want to be here, but I also want to do stuff on the computer. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, that was very interesting, but yeah, I feel like my start definitely, um, was in community college for sure. Okay. Yeah. I also actually went to community college and I feel like community college was a great place for me to make a bunch of mistakes and learn. Yep. And, uh, before I got to university, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I think, I think, you know, like people, when you, you watch the, the TV show community and people kind of like make fun of the idea of a community college, but I think it is one of the most important things that ever happened to me in my life was, was going to a community college and just figuring out like the beginnings of my adulthood. Oh, hell yeah, yeah. definitely. I mean, for me, especially, I, I knew I was going to go to community college just because I'm like, well, I'm not exactly in a good financial spot after high school and community college just seems like the best way to start and save some money before I really know what I'm doing. Because when I was 18 and was in community college, I, oh my gosh, if anyone here knew me when I was 18, 
totally different person. I was so shy. I didn't really care about much anything except for my art. And like community college gave me that chance to figure out what I wanted to do. I was all over the place. I wanted to be a paleontologist or a vet or I like a, 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 a oh, what's the word? Someone who works with pottery. Like I wanted to do those things. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then. <laughs> You know, by the time I was getting close to the end of my time in community college, I'm like, no, none of those things are like things that I really am going to do. Right. But art, I know for sure, like I want to pursue that. And when I found out graphic design kind of housed artsy stuff, it was just, I knew that's what I wanted to do. That's cool. That's a cool story. So yeah. what did you, so you went to OSU, correct? Oregon State University? Yep. Yep. Okay. So what it, what was your, I know art has many different facets. Uh, what did you focus on, on the, in, in the art world? And what was your experience at like, like Oregon State University? Hmm. Well, when I went there originally, I still had some credits left over that I needed to complete from community college for like basic classes. So I really just started there and was just kind of doing all sorts of things to complete those specific credits that I needed, but um, let's see, art-wise and graphic design-wise, um, I like focused on painting and drawing. Those were the things that I had the most interest in. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see, yeah, like getting into the program, which the graphic design program at OSU is amazing, but it is such a challenge to get into. Oh, um, interesting. The first time, I didn't get into it at all. I had to actually try a second time. Oh, that's crazy. So it's kind of like nursing school where you have to like submit an application. Basically, yeah. School. And you go through this whole class where you complete three different projects um, that all like tackle different things. And then at the end, you do one of those projects and you just kind of talk about where you'd like to go as a graphic designer if you get into the program. And first time I... Um, I've only been at OSU since the winter term. <laughs> I thought it was like community college where I could just hop in whenever I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> that was wrong. <laughs> so I didn't do so great. But second time, I was there for that full year prior to taking the class to get into the program. And I did so much better. I was so much happier. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. I think uh, a lot of people listening to this are either nearing the university age or already in university. And I think your stories like, like your story um, are really good for people to hear because when you're in high school and you're thinking about going to college or community college, you just think it's four years and it's all perfect and you get your credits. And But there's a lot of learning involved <laughs> with going to college. And you, you, you're right, you become a different person when you when you're, you know, once you've gone through that experience yep and it, it sounds like you know a, a lot of it was was good for you so. oh yeah i definitely would agree with that <laughs> cool all right well now we're gonna dive into some uh we're gonna actually jump back into pokemon because the new pokemon sword and shield expansion the uh the crown of tundra came out on friday was it yes okay Okay, cool. So we're going to discuss this without giving spoilers as best we can. Oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so from, if you're listening to this podcast and you haven't played Pokemon Sword and Shield and you don't want any spoilers, I suggest stopping listening right now and maybe skipping forward a little bit. Um, but we're going to talk about the uh, initial game and then the secondary, the secondary uh, expansion, um, and kind of your just your impressions of it and what what you thought about it. So when you downloaded Sword and Shield, Sword or Shield, and you played through it and beat all the gyms and caught the legendary Pokemon at the end, what did you think about it? What were your first impressions? Oh man. That's, that's asking a lot, considering <laughs> I did that quite some time ago. Because <laughs> I was just talking to my fiancé, and he's like, yeah, this game's been out for, like, nearly a year now. I'm like, you're kidding. Yeah. There's no way. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I, I guess wasn't, I mean, no one was expecting what happened when you 
get to that point in the main game, but I was just a bit underwhelmed with Eternatus, <laughs> okay. I guess. Only because, like, when you get him after you initially, like, catch him and stuff, and, and you have him on your party, and you're going to fight with him, like, he can't item X. <laughs> it makes me sad because, and this isn't really spoilers, I guess, just because the trailers show that the legendaries are Dynamaxed, but yeah, yeah. those legendaries can be Dynamaxed. I want Eternatus to Dynamax too, and he doesn't, and that makes me sad. <laughs> can you, I haven't actually tried this because I've just started uh, giving the Dynamax soup to some of the Pokemon in my party, but, uh -huh. but can you give that to Eternatus or can he just not Dyna Dynamax at all? So, funny story, I have not finished the Isle of Armor, and I have not even gotten to the Max Soup yet. <laughs> okay. So I have no idea. Okay, so that's something for our listeners. Can you Dynamax Eternatus after giving him the soup? Yeah, I'd love to know. I think you can, maybe. But I Dynamaxed my Charizard, and it looks amazing VMaxed, so... Whoa. Yeah. Um... It, it, it's, it's been a lot of fun uh, getting the max level. I don't think I've uh, got Pokemon to max level since the first few generations. What, what have you been doing uh, in, in Pokemon that has been fun for you? Um, well, not to... Well, no, I think it might be a spoiler if I, if I mention it. I don't know if people know about it, but it's in the new expansion, so... Okay. I just won't talk about it. Uh, <laughs> well, let's, just do, let's just do spoiler alert. Say whatever you want. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, the Max Layer, I think, is super cool in okay. the uh, new expansion. I don't know if you've gotten that far yet. Uh, I was able to do the introductory layer where they get, they just tell you to go with NPCs. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Yeah, I only play with the NPCs um, just because I think, I think my account cannot connect to online. It oh. has to be like that first account you make that can use online, I think. I don't really know. Point is, I've been having to play with the NPCs. Okay. So you're, you're on hard mode the whole time. <laughs> I am, yeah. Well, mostly because I don't think I have a choice. I'll have to fiddle around with it. But um, yeah, I, I personally think that the max layer NPCs are actually better than the uh, Dynamax like raid spots that you find in the wild areas. They're just... They're not smart, but they're smarter. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. It's so funny when it's like when your Wobbuffet that's in your party does absolutely nothing the entire battle. Or uses counter when it hasn't been hit. Yeah, it just sits there and counters the whole time. And you're like, Wobbuffet, just hit them once, please. <laughs> if yeah. I see a Wobbuffet on my NPC team, I usually just start over. That's probably... <laughs> a new set of NPCs. <laughs> That's probably a good strategy, actually, if you're doing yeah. NPCs the whole time. That's yeah. funny. Um, so I have two questions concerning uh, what your favorite Pokemon is. First off, what's your favorite all-time Pokemon? And then what's your favorite new one from the Sword and Shield generation? Ooh. Okay, well, <laughs> funny enough, I was just talking to my fiancé last night about what my favorite Pokemon is. because. <laughs> nice. He, he was telling me what his is, and I'm like, you know, if I had to pick a Pokemon that if I were in the Pokemon universe and I had to have just one that I took with me everywhere, it would be Vaporeon. It's been the one that I've loved since I first saw it, and I'm like, dude, this Pokemon has everything that I love. It's, it's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> it, it has water moves. It's got a little, like cute neck ruff thing and a flipper tail like this is just great <laughs> nice vaporeon it's a uh it's an oldie but a goodie yes yeah i think that was my favorite of the vaporeon flareon jolteon i think yeah. i think vaporeon's takes the cake the problem was in the the original pokemon was that you had like gyarados and stuff and lapras mm -hmm. that i also wanted to use as a water type Mm -hmm. um, and Blastoise, like there's so many fun water types, so yeah. it's it's hard to choose one. But yeah, yes. Vaporeon's a very very fun one. Do you play Pokemon Go? Uh, I did when it first came out, but my phone is just 
a little piece of shit cheap Android phone, oh. and it can barely handle anything that Pokemon Go has. Oh, uh, okay, okay. <laughs> so I'm just like, I'm done. I played it in the beginning, and that was cool, but nah, not what? my thing anymore. Well, if you ever get a phone upgrade, Lily and I send each other gifts, so you could jump. You could jump on that. Heck yeah. <laughs> So, uh, what is your favorite Pokemon from the Crown, uh, or just Sword and Shield in general, the, the newly released Pokemon? Hmm. Like, as far as anything goes, or like something specific? Um, just, uh, just like what you, what you like from it, like the looks, or like if, it, if you use it in battle a lot, or just... The if it shows up in the story and you, you liked it because it was in the story at a, at a certain point. Okay, um, I mean, as far as like looks go, I personally really like the new Articuno, and I think mm. it has to do with the fact that its tail is just so mesmerizing, mesmerizing to watch. Oh, okay. And <laughs> it also <laughs> just looks like a really cool supervillain with its like little mask thing that it has going on with its eyes yeah yeah i saw the art of that the other day i think it's on one of the new pokemon cards i believe Ooh. yeah i might need to get that yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah like that one definitely as far as battling goes i would probably say urshifu is pretty cool oh. i don't have my own urshifu yet but i've seen my fiance play with his and it is absolutely amazing he has the dark fighting version nice. not, the, not the fighting water one but either way it's it seems pretty cool it looks like it uh can take a bunch of hits you know pretty pretty sturdy pokemon which i like mm -hmm. yeah i actually chose the the water one mm -hmm. and and that that's the one that i think you, you mentioned to me you were planning on getting at some point um yeah. i the, the, it has a water move that hits three times um, and it's always a critical hit. Uh, it only has five PP. So Do you know what it's called? I don't remember what it's called, but it is so good because it critical hits every time. So it just like one shots anything fire. <laughs> okay, not to not to spoil anything for you, and this has to do with the expansion. But I think that of the three legendary birds that you get the option of having, that Moltres has the best move set when you first catch it. Mm. Oh, nice. Yeah. So it has it has three dark moves and one flying move. And the dark moves are just they're disgusting. It knows nasty plot. And it also mm. has a new move called Fiery Wrath. And oh. if it raises its special attack like three, four times, you're just dead to Fiery Wrath and it's amazing. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That sounds fun. I have only caught one legendary in the new the new expansion, um, but I'm really excited to jump in into the rest of it. Oh yes, definitely. You need to. It is amazing, and it's what I had wished the first expansion were like. Nice, nice. Instead yeah. of instead of just like finding diglets in the ground everywhere. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I spent so many to find. Don't remind me. <laughs> yeah, it's like you are twenty percent done. I'm like I've been looking for diglets all day. <laughs> I did find all like five or six in this cave though, and I was really happy about that. Oh yeah! I'm like, wow, I got one done. <laughs> I completed an area. Now I have eight more. <laughs> but all right, so now we're gonna move <laughs> from Pokemon to Magic: The Gathering because you pr yeah. played in our brawl tournament a while back, the only one that we held, and eventually we want to bring them back, but we just don't have enough time. Yeah. Um. So. What do you like to do in Magic? Like, what is your perfect Magic the Gathering game night? Is it going to F&M? Is it playing Commander with three other friends? Is it going to a Grand Prix and, or a Magic Fest? What, what, what do you like to do? I really like casual. Nice. It's one that I feel the most comfortable with because I have, I have really bad anxiety and I've tried playing in like pre-releases and I I just am like nope anxiety is too bad and uh, I'm out <laughs> <laughs> but uh, casual definitely is the way to go um, I'm much more of a commander player personally I have like 
four or five commander decks that I'm constantly upgrading. Oh, nice. uh, I just upgraded um, a, uh, I want to say it was my Farika deck that I have, or it might have been Marchesa, I don't know. One of those two, they got some super juicy upgrades. I get to play them, but I'm very, very happy about that. Nice. So Farika is the black green one, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. she's like the, the Gorgon. Okay. Lady. Yep. Nice. So with um, the opening of Kraken cards, once COVID's over, we'll probably be having some, some game nights, some commander nights, pre-releases. Uh, you have to, so this is, this is part of the deal of being on the podcast. You have to publicly agree that you will be my two-headed giant partner in a pre-release at some point. <laughs> Deal. Yes. I'm going to get Chelsea to play in a two-headed giant to the, together. We're going to win it. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, that that's going to be exciting and we're going to we're going to have you back on the podcast and talk about it when once COVID's over. Oh my gosh, yes. I look forward to that day. Nice. So, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Anyone you wanted to shout out any, you know, design Instagram handle that you wanted people to know about? Yeah, um, so I have a graphic design account on Instagram. It's at Seagate underscore design. And I don't post there very often. I should honestly just post more because I make cool stuff. But, uh, <laughs> but I, I forget. But if you want to check out what I have on there, definitely go there. Awesome. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time this afternoon to talk with us and, and get, get to know you better. So everyone, um, be sure to look out for Chelsea's ne next episode where we dive into more magic Pokemon and other design related stuff and maybe even other games. Uh, email me at mitch at inkedgaming.com if you have some specific questions for Chelsea's next appearance. And thank you and have a good one. Heck yeah. <laughs> Thank you for listening to High Tide with Kai, an Inked Gaming and Kraken Cards podcast. Be sure to head to inkedgaming.com for all your gaming accessory needs. Inkedgaming.com. Mm -hmm.